The most powerful idea in the entrepreneurship world over the last 15 years or so is the lean startup. Taking ideas that were developed in lean production and applying them to the startup world. The big promulgator of this is Eric Ries, who wrote the book, The Lean Startup, and he has an excellent website that goes into more detail on various aspects of the book. The basic concept here is to think about business as a science experiment. You're try you have hypotheses about what customers are interested in, how you're going to make money, how you're going to produce your product or service, and in some way you need to test those hypotheses. And along the way, that means you are bounding uncertainty. And bounding is a kind of a social science term sometimes, um, to the idea of reducing and limiting uncertainty to know what you really know and to reduce what you don't know progressively. Part of the point here is to do so not just quickly, but inexpensively. And this is a big shift from the pre-lean startup days, where you would put out a product and potentially spend quite a bit of money on it, and spend quite a bit of money on marketing, and then see what the market reaction is. So today, what we talk about is experimentation. Trying out different ideas with potential customers before you're even out in the market. Then staging, starting with minimum viable product, figuring out what your very first market is and how you can grow from there and how your product uh, features can be developed as well over time as opposed to all at once. And all this means that you're shifting risk to later in the process where potentially you have more money either from generating it from early customers or from investors who are seeing your traction with existing customers. So the whole concept here is test, then invest. Whether it's external investors, your own money, or your time. What Eric Reese is emphasizing is lean startup as a quality process. And for those of you who are involved in quality initiatives in your employment, this should look quite familiar. You start with your ideas. And then you're going to have whatever that new thing is. For Eric Reese, a lot of times it's software code. For others, it might be a new product or service or this idea of a minimum viable product. And by sharing this with potential customers, you're generating data. And this is a cycle. And the key thing is to think about what happens between each of these stages. Here, you're building something. Here, you're measuring reaction. And here, you're learning from that data so that you can iterate and come closer and closer to what makes sense for your customers. Each of these steps has a set of techniques related to it. And the whole idea, again, is to learn faster. One thing might be an A-B test, where you put out two different prices or two different landing pages or two different product designs or service offerings to see what people think and how people respond. They might uh, be more likely to express interest in one than the other or even pay differently for one that versus the other. I really want to highlight customer interviews. 
all along this process, you're asking people what they think. And there's a whole technique to customer interviews that I'll be sharing in, in another uh, video. Customer development means then translating what you've learned from those customers to now start uh, acquiring customers, actually building those relationships into people that are paying you. One technique very familiar from the quality world is five whys. What is the real problem that people are experiencing that you can then be able to respond to with whatever your new thing is? A lot of times people, especially after they get along a little bit, but sometimes before they've launched their business, you'll have a customer advisory board to give you input as you're going along. And again, this whole idea of the business enterprise as a, an experiment. And therefore, as you're going through this cycle, to posit hypotheses that you can test and therefore are falsifiable in some way. Along the way, you'll develop some, some sense of who your customers are. And the term that's used in Lean Startup World is archetype. But those of you who are marketers might better know the term as the customer persona. What are the characteristics of your most likely customers, both their demographics as well as their psychographics? Cross-functional teams helps a lot as you're going along here because you want to think holistically, not throwing an idea over the, over the wall or over the fence, but going through the build, measure, learn cycle with the full team. Another way to think about the Lean Startup process is to think about customer development as having two very distinct stages. The first stage is customer discovery and then customer validation. And here you're going to iterate a lot. You're going to go talk to people, develop minimum viable products based on understanding their problems and their preferences for solutions start validating that you have the right customers and, and that your minimum viable product actually meets their needs. And potentially, you might have to go back and start that process again and again. And the beauty of this is that you're not spending a ton of money. You're getting reaction without actually building the business. So once you have gotten your customer validation, you can then seek funding showing some kind of customer traction, at which point you have what they refer to as customer creation. Any other person would call it sales. And that then develops into building the company. Here is where you're executing and spending the serious money. I want to emphasize that the Lean Startup is not the solution to everything. There are so-called boundary conditions, to use a scientific term. Sometimes you can't do an A-B test or a minimum viable product if you have to be very careful about mistakes. So in the medical devices world, you're not going to put out a prototype and see how it works and see how people respond to it actually in a clinical setting because you could hurt or kill people. You have to think about more, cre more creative ways of addressing getting feedback. You also have to be very careful about not wrecking mission critical activities. So pretend you're in a nuclear plant, for instance. The other thing is that customer discovery takes time. If you're in a setting where demand uncertainty is low because you have some reason to know that there will be a ton of demand for your product or service, then don't wait for the MVP experiments. Just go forward. But also don't fool yourself. Make sure that you have really good validation for moving forward uh, and no, actually knowing that that demand uncertainty is low. And the other thing is sometimes it's just really hard to get reactions, especially if you have a very, very fresh or groundbreaking idea. And therefore, 
the reactions are not going to be uh, of high quality where people are really giving you good, actionable response. In other words, information quality is low. And that can be an issue as well. But a lot of times, the MVP tests are not actionable because you haven't designed them right. So it's worthwhile thinking about that more to really say to yourself, can I at least get some sense of what my market is going to do when I actually get to the point of developing and um, putting my product out into the market? Another issue is in some fields, development cycles are really, really long. So the time it takes for a, a brand new medical device to get out into the market can be a decade. And so the, minim, the uh, lean startup process, which comes from the software world, has to be really modified when you're thinking about things with very long development cycles. You're still getting feedback, you're still iterating, but you are going to be using different kinds of tools along the way.